Hello and welcome. Today we are going to print a nice big Demogorgon. Hopefully that's something you're interested in as we take a look at Stranger Things and D&D. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. As I said in the intro, we are going to take a bunch of PLA, make it into these parts, and then make a really cool Demogorgon. So Stranger Things has kind of come back with season four and just kind of one of the things my local science center had an evening event on that and I had fun because we made several of these and it was just a really good model. A lot of people enjoyed them and I want to share it with you guys because if you're a fan of Stranger Things and want something cool and creepy sitting on your shelf, this is definitely a model that you want to go out and find. And this is actually a combination of two models because I found another one that was a really awesome base plate that did some really cool painting too and just looked awesome. And I want to share that with you guys. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to one, go find the model. Two, we're going to slice the models. Three, we're going to print the models. Four, you're going to get to see the final product of the models. So a lot going on in the video, a lot of steps. We're going to talk about Kira. We're going to talk about all those fun things. And we're going to make sure we have a good build because the one thing about this model that I really love, this is FDM. Now they're stringing on it because I literally just took it off the printer and I'm going to give you a cool tip later on on how to get rid of that stringing in a real simple way. So stick around for that tip. But I mean, there's, this is a 0.4 nozzle and you guys can see those fingers look creepy and they are strong. They're not weak. So really fun stuff to do. This guy is blown up quite large. You guys can see his chest is as big as my head. So a lot of fun here and I hope you guys enjoy it and if you guys enjoy the content that you see on this channel want to see more things like stranger stuff the expanse and I call it stranger stuff stranger things whoops whoopsie um, and stuff like that hit that subscribe button if this is something that you like seeing on the channel definitely hit that like button and let us know because we're always looking for fun things to share with you guys and also if you are interested in supporting the channel check down in the description below and go hit that patreon link and help us out so Without further ado, let's hop over to the computer, go find the two files that we're using today, and then we're gonna take them into the Kira slicer and get them sliced. Who knows? We may even look at resin. We'll take a look at that maybe. But, a lot of cool stuff. You'll get to see my settings, how I printed it, and got this one to work. First shot for you guys. Took me one or two to get them working. So, makes things a lot easier. Um, hopefully make these quick, simple prints for you guys an easy win. So, let's head over to that computer and let's go find these files. All right, guys, so we've jumped to Thingiverse and here we are looking at Thingiverse and the models can easily be found with the search Demogorgon. And you can see all the cool files that come up in Thingiverse for that. We're going to use this one and this one. So, here's the Demogorgon. Gorgon, all credit to KSP Moore for that model. It is a fantastic model. It is cut really well and it's really easy to print. So, and I did this guy at 200%. This is a 200% figurine. You can see he's huge. All this was done with an Ender 3. It is really well done, it is really broken up, and really easy to assemble with super glue after you're done. So, yeah, he's just going to chill out here for a little bit. And for the base, which I don't have one for this one yet, I'm working on that. I took this base and I also blew it up to match this guy at 200%. The pegs are a little bit off, but I just wound up actually cutting them off. And I cut them at an angle to where the back part of his feet here could stand on them really well so he could stand up. So these are the two models that we're using today. Links will be down in the description below. So you can go out there and go print these yourself because they are just really well done um now the stranger things at 200 percent the base i did use a cr10 for that one so i have not tried it on an ender 3 so i do not know if it will fit but all credit for the coolio 2 for the base so definitely go check these out on thingiverse like them add them into your inventory if you're a really big fan of stranger things but there are some other ones out there that this diorama looked really cool. I may go and do that one in resin um, if you want me to. Comments. Um, there's a lot of neat things in here. Um, here's one where it's a base pair, a different type of base, but I love the Stranger Things written into the base. So now we've got our models. Now let's go get them sliced. So we're gonna hop over to Kira 
and we're going to slice these. Catch you over on Kira. All right, so Kira, current version that is available, it's not the new 5.0 that is in beta, but you guys can see I have the base thrown on here. Um, now, this guy is printed at 200%. So everything needs to go to 200% for this to work right for all these pieces. So that means his base needs to go that way too. And I don't think, look, looking at this, I don't think this is gonna fit on an ender. And it doesn't, just blatantly. So for that one, um, you can actually break it in half in Mesh Mixer and do it. But you guys can see, I don't know why it's dipping below the build plate here. There it goes. Um, this is a CR-10 and it takes up a good chunk of my build plate for even my CR-10. That's how I did my base. Really fun base, you guys will see it in the pictures here soon. soon. Um, when we go to the time-lapse part, I painted it all black and then I came back with, uh, I think it was corn red from Citadel Paint and to the, uh, did the lettering. So, really cool one. Takes about a day or so to print. It was not a very long print, so definitely one to look at, but that's not what we're here for, right? So I want to clear the build plate. I'm gonna hop back to my Ender 3 parameters, and let's take a look all what's in this file. So I'm gonna load in everything. You guys can see stuff's getting thrown off to the side, doesn't fit. That's because it comes in a couple ways. So here are the parts. And I'm going to just kind of scooch them over for a little bit. I'm going to bring on the full model. So they do offer this a full model with a plate. And I'm going to redo my view here to front. And you guys can see, pretty neat model. Love the base. If you're going to go resin, this is the one I would throw into Shinto Box. Or Linchi or whichever one you're going to do and just print. But we're going to get rid of him because that's not how I did it and how you're going to see it. They also just have the model itself. Pretty awesome. It's at 100%. Pretty cool, cool model. But that's not the one we did either. Because I did it in pieces. I'm going to auto arrange my pieces. This is at 100%. You guys are going to see the prints broken up. I did the chest, I did the legs, and then I did the face and the hands all together in three separate prints because I blew it up that 200%. And we're going to talk about that. I'm going to select all models and we're going to jump 200%. You guys can see it gets pretty big. Um, Cause that's the fun of it, right? So I'm going to move these around a little bit to show you the three builds. We're going to start with the chest. One, we got to get it on the build plate. There we go. There it is. And for the chest, I just centered him. Um, my support, I knocked it down to about 70% for this one because I wanted good support for the arms. It comes pre-supported, but I had a prop. They just weren't good enough. So I put in some supports and honestly, I kind of like the way the supports played into the model. It gave some roughness across here that I did clean up a little bit, but it just kind of gives to the ugliness of this character. Um, it gives a little bit of extra detail, not so smooth. So, and the one that I'm showing you guys, this white one, has no filler lines, nothing. It's just put together. That's it. So, that's what I did for the chest. I'd slice it. It'll fill in. Basically, where there's red, it would add support. And that's all I did to the chest. So, we are going to get rid of the chest. The chest took about two days to print. This one was the hard part. We're going to get him all the way up. And to print this one, I had to rotate him. Um, actually, when you guys see this one printed, it was done on my Odin, which is about the same size as a Ender. So you gotta, gotta turn him to get him to fit on the build plate, but he will fit at 200%. And there we go. And honestly, I ran supports at 90%. And we'll go through the full settings here in a, in a little bit. Um, when we get to these center pieces, definitely I'll take you through the whole range of my settings. So, um, the base supports were good. I did 90%. It gave some extra support through here, so these built up really well. I had a failure of support here. You guys will see that in the video. But all in all, 200%, that's going to build pretty good. So we're going to get rid of that piece. Now we're going to come to the fun part. These hands are just wow. 
I'm gonna drag the head on there too. Actually, I'm gonna auto arrange these. There we go. So those hands had me worried the first time I printed this, but they print gorgeously. No, really no support needed for them. They build up on their own really nicely. The head will need some support here, but that's about it. So 90% was great. Now we're gonna go up and look at all my settings. So layer height of 0.2, um, wall thickness 0.8. So just kind of get in there and kind of get an idea of what's going on. Uh, there's my top and bottom layers. Uh, infill, I did not go very much. I did 10%. Uh, with my walls as thick as they are, they did really well. Here are my temperatures. Now, we had a stringing issue and that was kind of a problem and not something we wanted to see. Um, so you may go back up and look at your attraction settings, which are somewhere around here. Um, and since I changed filament and the weather has gone crazy here in Missouri, um, it kind of messed up the way my printers are working and I need to go back and do a test um, to see how this filament is going to interact with my temps and stuff to get a better temp set for uh, the Inland Pro. Um, um, not Inland PLA Plus, this is their Pro line. Um, so there's some stringing and stuff that I had not accounted for that I need to look at this retraction setting. I'm probably up that to 7.5 um, to take care of it, honestly. Support overhang 90. I did use a raft because I wanted these to have good adhesion and extra adhesion because the nozzle moving around the way it did. Um, but all in all, this was a beautiful print. I think these were done in like a day. So all in all, this is quite a fast print even though you gotta do two or three prints. Um, but the way he assembles, and like I said, this is 200% of the normal size. The way he assembles is just smooth. I had him put together with, soup. I used the Loctite super glue gel. I had him assembled in 30 minutes. And it's a good assembly, it's strong. Um, I'll take some Tamiya filler and fill in some of the joints. Then I'll sand it, prime it, and give him a decent little paint job. So, yeah, kind of a creepy one, but a fun one too. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. We're gonna hop over to the printer, we're gonna catch the print and hopefully it is a fun one and one you guys enjoy and we'll see you afterward with a tip on how i got rid of that string so let's get over to that print All right guys, that's the build. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. This is one of the little guys that we did. This is, like I said, at the model at 200%. This is all the pieces assembled. Um, I haven't done any filling or anything on it. This is a raw model, but all in all, pretty big, pretty fearsome looking. But I did talk about a tip earlier on, and it's dealing with that. See how it's stringed? So usually that's a retraction, but I tried a new filament. I tried Inland's PLA Pro, and uh, we kind of went from Missouri's 50, 60, 60, maybe 70 degree day to 100. 
So my AC has been pumping a lot. It's kind of changed the environment in my house and my shop a little bit. And the humidity went from zero to 100 real quick. And I got a little bit of stringing. Now normally retraction will solve this problem, but if you've printed and you've already got it, a hair dryer or a heat gun is your best friend. So I'm gonna let that heat up and we're gonna deal away with this real quick here. So the heat gun can do a lot with stringing. And now that it's heated up, we'll take the model over to it. And before, all stringy and nasty. Now, nice and clean. And it's just by running the heat gun over there, not too long. Now a hair dryer, you may have to run a bit longer, but don't run it too long or the model will start to melt. Then you got bigger problems, but just kind of run it over an angle over the whole model. And stringing, no more. Problem solved. Heat gun, this is like Harbor Freight for like 20 bucks. This is a great tool when you're doing 3D printing at all, especially if you need to do cleanup and stuff like that. It is a great tool. Also, if you uh, have a hot end get completely clogged or your brass nozzles and you want to try to clean them out, propane torch or this guy. Really great one. So this is the Drill Master heat gun, Harbor Freight. Works great. I'll put an, a link down in the description to one on Amazon, but uh, definitely a tool to keep in your shop. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button and join us. Um, we're growing quickly. Um, I'm very excited about the way we grow and doing cool stuff like Mr. Demogorgon here. Also, if you like this video or you want to see more of stuff like this, definitely leave a comment down below and let me know if you have any questions about 3D printing. Questions, put them in the comments. And also, put a, please hit the like button. Um, we work very hard here to put good content out and help everybody get printing and make cool stuff. And a like button is awesome. So definitely one of those things. And if you want to support the channel and help us do cool things and get your name to cr scroll across the screen here soon, definitely go down in the link and consider joining our Patreon. So I thank you guys and we will see you in the next video.